Hey guys, it's Ender here from the Digital Storm Forums. First up, before you do anything on the inside of your case, you want to make sure you flip off the power supply with the switch on the back of the case and remove the power cable. You can also press the power button after you've done this to release any static charge. The motherboard orientation you see here is going to be standard for most cases when you remove the side panel, so we'll use the same thing throughout the whole video. We're going to think of the processor and RAM as the top half of the motherboard and the PCI slots and SATA in and out as the bottom half. Starting with the basics, your motherboard is going to have two individual power connections. The first one we're going to see is the 24 pin power connection on the right side. There's going to be a matching clip and notch on this connector to show you which way it should connect. And when you put it into place, you'll hear an obvious click to let you know that it's seated properly. In the top left corner of the motherboard, you're going to find at least one, possibly two 8 pin power connections. Same clip, same matching notch, pulls out and goes back the exact same way. Next we're going to reseat the RAM. Most of us are going to have two or three sticks which you'll find in the top right section of the motherboard. To remove these you're going to push the clips on either side of the stick out which will loosen it and allow you to pull it straight out of the slot and then to reseat it you just simply place it straight back in the slot. Push down gently on either side of the stick until you hear the clips go back into place. If you're adding or replacing RAM then just make sure you line up the long end of the RAM stick with the long end of the RAM slot. If it fits, it's going to work. Again, when you're putting it back into place, you'll hear a click from both clips on either side of the stick. Reseating a video card is actually pretty similar. Right here you can see a GTX 470. Most video cards are going to look pretty similar to this. On the left side you can see the PCI slot and the right side you can see the SLI ports. Simply line up the PCI slot with a matching PCI Express slot on your motherboard. If it doesn't fit, obviously it won't work. Don't force anything. There should be a clip that you have to press up or down to release the card. Once you get it all the way out of the slot, you simply put it right back in in the exact same way. You'll hear the click when it seats into place properly. When you're doing this inside the case, you're going to need to reach your hand all the way over the video card, so you may need to remove any other PCI slot items that are in the way, or if you have one, your SLI bridge. When you're doing this inside the case, the first thing you need to do is remove the power cables. Each of them are going to have an individual clip which attaches to a tab on your video card. Simply press in on the clip to pull it free from the video card. Next you're going to look at the far left where the case attaches to the video card with a screw or a toolless clip. As soon as you get that out of the way, just reach over the video card, press down or up on the clip on the motherboard, and pull it free. Once you pull it free, you can place it back into the exact same slot. You need to make sure you line it up on both the left side and the right side. The PCI slot on the back will line up with the back of your case, and you'll hear the click when the motherboard attaches to the video card. As soon as you've got it back in place, you can replace the screw or toolless clip on the far left where the video card attaches to the case. After that, you need to replace both power cables. Next up, we're going to reseat power and data connections. First we're going to look at the optical drives which you'll find in the top right of the case in the five and a quarter bays. You can also find card readers and potentially fan controllers up here. Anything that attaches to the motherboard can potentially cause problems. In the bottom right hand corner of the case you're going to find your hard drives. If you have more than one it's pretty easy to identify your boot drive if you have a solid state drive as it'll be about half the overall size as any of the other storage drives you have. Both optical drives and hard drives have a SATA and a power connection. They're usually labeled on the piece itself, but even if they're not, all you need to do is press down on any clip that may be on the plug, pull it out, and replace it. Hard drive is done the same way. It has the same data and power connections. The other ends of these cables are going to attach to your motherboard for the SATA connections and to your power supply. If you have a modular power supply, you need to press in the same clip that we saw in all of our other power connections 
to pull it out of the power supply and when you replace it listen for the click to make sure it went back into place properly if you have any hardware that wasn't addressed in the video or you didn't understand anything just post in the forums for help or you can email DigitalStorm directly. Links for both of those can be found in the description.